Welcome to the True Crime Never Sleeps Podcast. I am your host, Larry Elise. Today we're diving into the unsolved robbery of the Denver Mint. First, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Poddex, for sponsoring this episode. Poddex are unique interview questions and episode starting prompts in the palm of your hand. So whether you're a new podcaster or existing broadcaster looking to grow your audience and get more engagement, you're going to want to check out poddex.com. And don't forget to use the code Larry21 for 10% off your first order. These decks that Poddex offers have really helped me grow my audience. I had a podcast when I started with maybe only like 10 or 15 uh, downloads or listens. And then by the time I got more into Poddex, I started seeing those numbers grow. So Poddex does help with your podcast and it gives you a it's a way to make your podcast more fresh and not stale after regurgitating the same stuff over and over and over. Yeah. There's one deck that they offer you um, for 50 different episode prompts that you can use on your podcast, giving you 50 fresh episodes that you can use at any time you want. So check them out today at poddex.com. So now... And we'd like to th- also remind you that if you want to be a part of the show, send us a voicemail at 682-305-0483. And you can be featured in a future episode. But now, let's dive right into the unsolved robbery of the Denver Mint. Never thought this would be ever possible. But join us. Now let's dive right in. On December 18th, 1922, a day like any other, as a Federal Reserve bank truck sat outside the U.S. Mint in Denver, Colorado. At the time, the guards on duty had just loaded up a total of $200,000 when, at 10.30 a.m., a group of thieves pulled up in a Buick beside the truck. While one of them stayed behind the wheel as a getaway, the other three men jumped out. As one robber rushed to the rear of the truck, firing at fatally striking a guard, Colonel Linton, in the process, the second thief smashed open the truck's window. As the money was lifted out by the second man, the other two sprayed the mint building with bullets from their sawed-off shotguns. As the bandits went to work and the alarms bell clanged away, employees of the mint building grabbed their rifles and returned fire. Within seconds, bullets peppered West Colfax, several other buildings nearby, as well as the side of the mint building itself. Ninety seconds later, shots stopped flying from both directions. The robbers got away, driving east on Colfax with 50 packages of $5 bills in tow. The ensuing investigation, the bandits were traced from Omaha to Chicago, then St. Paul before their trail went cold. Then, a month after the robbery took place on January 14, 1923, one of the confirmed thieves, Nicholas Trainer, was located, his frozen body discovered in the getaway car used in the heist inside a rented garage at the back of 1631 Gilpin Street in Denver. As later determined, Trainer had sustained injuries during the robbery and ultimately died during the gang's escape. Following the discovery of his body, police suspected that Harvey Bailey, whom Trainer had worked with in the past, may have also been a member of the gang in the robbery. However, no evidence was ever found to implicate Bailey in the theft in any capacity. Then, a little over a month after locating Trainer's body on February 17th, authorities in Minnesota raided an abandoned hideout where $80,000 from the theft was recovered. An additional $73,000 in bonds stolen during another bank robbery in Walnut Hills, Ohio, was also seized. Since Trainer and Bailey were both considered suspects in the earlier heist, police at the time became further convinced of Bailey's involvement. Bailey himself had had, by that point, fallen off police radar in the late 1920s and continued evading capture into his eventual arrest and conviction in 1933. He eventually died in 1979. Twelve years after the recovery of Trainer's corpse in 1934, the remaining bandits were all positively identified. The Denver police chief at the time, A.T. Clark, released a statement announcing that five men, as well as two men, had colluded in the robbery. He also disclosed that 
Of the individuals involved, only two remained alive by that point, and both were already serving life sentences in the Midwest for other crimes. According to police, the thieves fled to the Minneapolis-St. Paul area with the money before, the, before it was then given to a prominent Minneapolis attorney. The police further added that the other members of the gang had died violently. Years later, in June 1950, one of the two alleged remaining robbers, James Oklahoma Jack Clark, was pardoned from the Indiana State Penitentiary. Following his release, Clark moved to a small farm in Kansas near his family, where he granted an interview with the Denver Post writer Wayne Phillips. In said interview, Clark mentioned that there were three members of the Mint Robbery Gang who were still alive. Clark said, quote, one of them is still up where I was. If they found me, they ought, they ought to be able to find him. The case of the Denver Mint was eventually closed on December 1st, 1934, without a single person ever being charged in connection with the theft. And that's all we have for this episode of the True Crime Never Sleeps podcast. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Um, you can find us on all major podcast platforms. And please do check us out on Good Pods. I believe it's available on Apple and Android devices. Check them out today. And let us know in the comments section what you think about this case. While it's closed, do you think anybody will uh, open up about it and say that they were part of it? Or at least a family member because most of them are probably dead by now. Let us know in the comment section below. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Take care. Thanks for watching. Um, check out our other videos. Um, check out uh, the video right here about the Delphi murders. You can check out our playlist of the latest episodes right here. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thank you.